Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dup Dog is gonna take this 1985 Ford F-150 that we had as a video on the main channel. We're gonna make it just a little bit better. So we got some big plans for this thing. We're gonna stick some headlights in it. We're gonna lift up the front. We're gonna fix the tailgate. We're gonna put a headliner in it. You know, we're gonna do all the stuff. Maybe uh, fix the heater core and everything else that's wrong with it. And some other stuff might come up along the way that wasn't wrong before, who knows? Stick around, find out. What do you think, Duff, you like this thing? Oh yeah, he says the blue Ford is good. So swapping these F-250 springs in was super easy. There's this little retaining clip up here. Make sure it's, it's got a little hook in the end and there's a, a hole on the backside where my finger's sticking through here. You gotta make sure it clips in that just right. Also, you're gonna have to drop the shock down in order to get it to uh, drop down far enough to get the spring out. We put new shocks in while we were at it. And then uh, there's a big nut down here that's an uh, inch and an eighth. So you gotta drop the socket through that same hole that I put my fingers through up here and then we used a half inch drive deep socket and then we used an adapter to a 3 ace ratchet because that was the only ratchet that we could get through this hole. And then you take that nut off and then there's a spring cup that that nut holds on. So pretty simple once we figured that part out. Then fishing the socket back up there after you've put it all back together is kind of tough. There's like a D shape on the top, make sure you line that up. And then the bottom is just kind of round so make sure you line that up in that cup as well. But yeah, super easy. And then while we had her up in the air, we burned that cross member in. Real good, so that uh, hopefully that lasts another 100,000 miles. And then also we put some shocks in the back, didn't we, Duff? Because we want a nice plush ride with this thing. And then also, I stuck a new Delco starter in there while we had her up in the air. This one, uh, the, the starter was staying engaged because the ignition switch was all gummed up and the column was gummed up, so we put a new switch in it and we ungummed the column, pulled the steering wheel off, and so we stuck a new Delco starter in there while we had. This starter's fine, it just makes a little noise because I think she's been over-engaged a few too many times. And it, by the looks of it, it's probably the original. But don't worry, we'll hang on to that and use that someday. All right. Oh, and then uh, while well, we had her up in the air, we took the bolts off. The stupid I'm on meth cattle guard. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. We took that off because everybody said that had to go. It's easy enough to put back on. So we'll see how we like it without it. What do you think, Duff? Let's get the wheels back on her. And then we just got to do the headliner. We already got it out, we just need to put the fabric on it. And then this thing's uh, pretty much ready to go. Oh well, so we put a heater core in it, new heater hoses. And of course, the heater core didn't fit very well. So we had to do a little modification to the uh, heater box. We just uh, did a couple cuts and then pushed the box up, slid it in there, and everything back together. 
Not a big deal, but everything on Rock Auto was made the exact same. They're like three-eighths of an inch taller than the original one. The original one had four brass tanks. The new ones are like a fabricated aluminum tank. They're slightly bigger, so... That's what you get for a $40 heater core. So let's get this thing on the ground and see how our budget-friendly leveling kit works. What do you think? Also, I measured 24 inches where it was sitting at before. So hopefully like 24 inches is like right here or here. Who knows? We're gonna find out. Always take a baseline measurement before you lower or lift anything. I always forget. Boy, what a difference did that make. The wheels used to sit like this, cambered in, now they're cambered out. And that's because of the way the geometry is on the twin traction beam suspension. As the springs sag out, the wheel tips in. And now we've got a taller spring in there, so the wheel tips down. So I don't know how you lift these things. They must make brackets to move the twin traction beam pivot points down or something. So I'm, I've seen them lifted before, but that's why when you see these things all sacked out and the wheel's sitting like this and they're wearing tires funny. But there's some bushings and stuff that go bad in there too. But this thing looks pretty good, other than the whole camber issue. You can see, it's and it's gonna settle down. I mean, these are brand new springs. Who's not gonna settle down? Duff ain't gonna settle down. This side actually doesn't look as bad. And who knows, maybe if we just bounce down the road for a couple miles, it'll be better, but. Look at this. Just backing it off the hoist to see if it went down any. All right, I marked it when it was on the hoist where 24 inches is at. Oh yeah, it came down two inches already just by backing it up. So, it looks like we only got about an inch of lift, which is all we wanted. Just to give us a little bit more clearance so she sits level. Oh man, I don't know. Another inch should be about right. Story of my life. <laughs> But it does look a lot better. We're into these springs, I don't think they were that much. 100, 150 bucks on Rock Auto, shipped. And then we need a new shocks anyway, so we're pretty close. And it does sit a lot better, like I said, an inch. So you can about imagine how it sat before. Starter sounds muy good, here I'll show you. And then I'll show you how the ignition switch doesn't hang up. Oh, look at that. Steel headliner actually doesn't look that bad, but we got the material, so we're gonna do it right. Look at this bad boy. Fires right up, starter don't grind, ignition switch turns back. We gotta test out the heat yet, but she's good though. I'm betting that heat works pretty good now. I don't like the fact that these new replacement heater cores are aluminum instead of being brass and copper. It seems like those heat better, but obviously you're gonna pay more and nobody reproduces them with brass and copper up there. So. All right, let's work on that headliner. So the latch on this tailgate was no bueno, so we gutted that and got her closed, and then I just tack welded it shut, and that is super inconvenient. So I went on the old Amazonia. We got these guys from uh, JQK, spring-loaded tailgate latches. I don't know what they're for, but that's what we're making them. That's what they identify as around here. So let's get that thing cut apart and get her all doctored up. I think these clamps were like 10 bucks on Amazon. It's kind of a two-handed operation to open the tailgate now, but at least we can open and close it. We put the tailgate on, it wasn't on the Piccoli. Uh, we got it, we put it on there, and then we brought it back for this episode. It wouldn't open. 
So we had a heck of a time getting open. Mojo and I had to get some pry bars, and screwdrivers, and everything out. So then we took the lashes all apart, and everything is just, it's wasted. This thing probably needs a new tailgate. Maybe if you got another donor tailgate with some good guts in it, you can make this work, but the, the damage is, is too far. This way, at least it's functional. It's, nobody sees it on the outside, so it's way good. You can see, you don't see anything out here. We straighten that dent out pretty good. See, it's got a pretty good dent here that we could knock it down, but you can see I put that put that filler in there because of the gap that it had. These things are pretty easy to open and close. That holds them open. Flip her down. Latches into place. And the more you use it, the more it's gonna go ahead and wear in and all that. Loosen up our tolerances, you know. And then this side I just use screws because I didn't have to have that filler plate in there. Good enough for the girls we go with. Yeah, we got a whole water here because we have a water tank and it's not hooked up to the rural water like the house is. So I was gonna haul the water tank to town. It's a 425 gallon tank. We gotta slow it in the back of the pickup or throw it on a trailer. Now. Perfect, we'll take the old blue here. Oh yeah, I gotta cut the welds on the tailgate to get it down to get it in there. So ended up using blue glue which Mojo is putting hood shocks on right now. So yeah, now we can haul water with this thing and do all kinds of things. Uh, the only problem, like I said, other than being two-handed where you gotta, you can't just slam the tailgate shut and open it with one hand. That and if you wanna slide anything over the tailgate, these things are gonna be in the way, but it's better than just floating around in the box like it was. And then we also took the grill guard off. I don't know if I told you guys that. I don't know if I like the way it looks without it. I mean, it looks fine without it, but I thought it looked fine on it. But at least we're not on meth anymore. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. I'm on meth. I think pretty much all we got left to do is the headliner, and then this thing's about wrapped up. All right, put my tools away. Get back at it, huh, Duff? Mojo, he's a good kid. Charging up the Cyclops. So she's ready to go for tomorrow. All right, nice snowy day out. Good day to put a new headliner in the old Bullnose Ford. So I got some fabric that I picked up off of Amazonia here. It's a blue. The pickup's blue. Got a Skizzers. And we got some 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. So you shake this up real good. You spray a little on one side of this, a little on that. You stick them together, bada bing, bada boom. Try not to get any wrinkles. Wash your hands first so you don't get any stains in your nice new headliner. We did this on the 92 Chevy OBS pickup. It's holding up pretty well. It's not amazing, but that was the first one I've ever done. The thing is, you gotta know how much glue to use. You can use too much because it bleeds through, and you can use not enough, and then it doesn't stick. How much to use? I don't know. Set your. Uh, what you, your discretion, that's the word I'm looking for. I forget what this was. I was wanna say it was like 40, 50 bucks. Maybe it was less than that. Pretty reasonable. Uh, this is the foam backer, or the cardboard backer from the pickup. Pretty easy to take out. And this stuff is not wide enough. Oh, it, it barely. Whew. Scared me for a second. There was a bunch of uh, residual headliner foam crap stuck to this. So I uh, vacuumed that off, wiped it off, whatever you want to call it. So we'll trim this kind of to size. Okay, never mind. There's not going to be hardly any left over. Perfect. You got a sweet stick to fight with your brother with? I don't have a brother, and I don't have anybody here, so there's gonna be no fighting, and we only got uh, one of these tubes. So I'm just gonna wait till Chin shows up, or Mojo, and we're just gonna whack him in the kneecap, you know, Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding style. I'm gonna hang on to that, though. I'd hit Duff, but he'd kick my butt. It's probably animal cruelty, too. Look at that, we already got dirt on the tank. This is why we can't have nice things. This is why we can't have nice things. So once you got it laid out and you know that it's going to cover what you got, I like to peel it back about halfway. And then let's read the destructions. Give me a second here. A few moments later. Shake can before using. Mold can 6 to 8 inches from surface to be sprayed. 
Now ask your wife how far that is. Don't use your own judgment. <laughs> Make bond while adhesive is aggressively tacky. <laughs> I know a few guys who are aggressively tacky. <laughs> That's Boy, a knee slapper. After use, invert can, depress, spray tip until spray is free of adhesive. Okay, so we got to shake her up good. We spray it on there from six to eight inches away. We wait for it to tack up, aggressively tacky, whatever the French that means. And then we schmoo it back on there. And then we uh, do the other side, trim it off, and then we install it. It's easy lemon squeezy, right, Dove? Right. Get yourself a nice, dirty, flat surface to do this on. You could probably do it on the tailgate of said vehicle. Now, wait for it to tack up. Probably enjoy yourself a sandwich in between. Go pet your dog, whatever it is you like to do. And my hands are dirty again, you should probably clean your hands off. Give her a couple more seconds. I don't know what aggressively tacky is. Can somebody define that in the comment section down below? Alex, what is aggressively tacky? Come back in a second. A few moments later. Looks aggressive enough for me. Looks, feels. You want to check it out though? Yeah, don't get that on your nose. Same deal, you kind of want to work. From the inside out. Try not to give yourself any air bubbles, kind of like putting a gecko on wallpaper. Have you ever done that before? Because I have. Is that still a thing? I don't know. There you go. Now we just got to go do the other side, trim it off. It's super easy. I don't know why people deal with crappy headliners. It's, these ones are super easy. These cardboard back ones, anyway. Ones in the 50s with the top bows and the material and all that stuff. We haven't tried one of those. Maybe we should try one of those one day. I heard they're terrible. Where you put your can away, if there's any left, there's just enough left to get me started on a project. I can get pissed off when I don't have any left to finish said project. So I'm going to take it spray upside down. So it comes out clear. That way she's uh, not gonna plug up the tip with glue for the next time. Your tech tip of the day, but it also says it on the back of the can. This can we used on the last one, and that was pretty near a year ago, so it does uh, hold up well to storage. Industrial grade, 3M, get the good stuff, Super 77. Not a paid promotion. Yicky, sticky. This means she's ready to go, though. Pretty good rub down, like that uh, Asian massage parlor. You can give yourself a happy ending with this one. Once you got that done, you just take out your skizzers, trim it all off. It's easy, lemon squeezy. You don't have to be real precise with these edges because they get covered by trim in this particular application anyway. Then get yourself the sharpest knife you can find. You got to trim off for the dome light and the uh, window visor thinger. Bob, with visors, windshield visors. Yeah, those things. I like to just go in a crisscross pattern. So you find one corner, punch her through. Remember I said get a sharp knife? Yeah. This is not the sharp knife. Is this one any sharper? Probably not. Hey, how about a brand new razor blade? Oh yeah, like a hot knife through butter. Here you go, now all you gotta do is put it in there. Razor blade works way better than a carpet blade. And you can hardly see the dirt spots we put on there. It's better than it was, right? All right, now we just gotta slide it back in there. All right, headliner's in. Did I tell you I put these bomb.com 
LED headlights in. That's really not the name of them, but I forget the name. They were Amazon specials. And uh, I don't really like the look of them, but they make one heck of a difference in the evening. Ask Chin, he was parked next to me one night and I flipped these on and he's like, holy but Jesus!" He looked over at me like he saw the light. Anyway, headliner's in. Didn't go terrible. I uh, knocked the mirror off in the process, so I had to re-glue the little metal tab to the windshield, but she's good enough for the girls we go with. It ain't perfect, but it is what it is. I didn't show the process because you didn't want to see and or hear the struggle. There you have it, you know, less than 50 or 60 bucks and a couple hours of work. Get yourself a headliner that you all sagged out. Now you need to get a new cover for this. Or dope light. We got any of those laying around, Duff? Not that he can think of. All right, there you have it. We took this uh, 1985 Ford F-150 XLT Lariat something or other, and uh, we got her a little bit more uh, daily driver friendly. You know, got that nice flush headliner in it. Got some new headlights in it. Uh, tried the poor man lift kit. Guys, it's, it's a myth. It didn't raise this thing up at all. It was not worth the effort. If you're gonna do that, get yourself some spacers or get yourself some legit springs to raise the front because I haven't measured again, but if I'm sure if I measured right now, it'd be like a, a half inch that we gained out of it. And uh, you would have probably got that if you'd put a brand new set of half ton coil springs in the front end, so. Oh yeah, we got the tailgate, so she actually functions. Pretty excited about that. We've been driving it. We busted through some pretty good snow with the old blue furred last night. Filled the wheels up, we uh, stuffed the bottom side. We actually got it stuck, but we backed out. It's a little bit underpowered, but it's it's not bad for what we got into it. The uh, Iron Man tires, is that what they got? Oh yeah, the Iron Man all country MTs, they're good. They howl a little bit going down the road, but radio works in it, heat works. We put a new heater core in it. Uh, windows work, we fixed the regulator on this side. Still got that stupid rattle on the dash, so we need to rip that apart. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good, ain't it, Duff? He likes riding in it. All right, thank you for watching this stuff on the second channel. Um, it's just kind of the smaller stuff that we gotta get done and we need to do, and I know you guys like seeing it, so uh, it just it's kind of a hodgepodge. This happened over a couple months because we work on it for a little bit and wait for parts and then we got more time to do it and yada 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 so it's, it's kind of they don't flow real well because you don't just sit down and bang it out which i'm sure that headliner has been sitting on my bench for like at least a month so thank you very much for watching check out our other videos check out the link below for the merch uh we're on patreon instagram mortski repair facebook mortski repair give us a follow on there uh, we're working on a website mortski.com it's uh Get some stuff on there for sale and whatnot but uh, yeah if you want to own this thing price and availability in the description she's a pretty good daily driver she needs a little bit of tweaking but i mean the thing is what 38 years old so you can't expect it to drive like new oh yeah we took the grill guard off but it's still in the back if you want to have that too remember it doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you're having fun duff is busting through the snow drifts fun oh yeah want to go for a ride your ears just perk right up when you hear that okay on to the next one